Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to test the oxygen sensor on this Mercedes C-Class from 2002. The most common mistake I've seen people doing is to replace the oxygen sensor when it's not necessary to do so. The computer on any car will use the oxygen sensor to basically read the exhaust gas and then adjust the fuel injection so that the engine will keep the air fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. It basically goes like this. You choose how much air goes into the cylinders by opening or closing the throttle body and then the computer job is to adjust the fuel delivery and read accurately how much air you choose in order to always keep the 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. So you probably noticed that one of the most challenging jobs for the computer is to always measure with precision how much air goes into the intake and further into the cylinders. And in previous videos, I presented you pretty much all the air sensors on this car. Now, how does the PCM know if the air fuel mixture is within spec? It's going to use the data from the oxygen sensor. In most of the situations from bank 1, sensor 1, which will show basically the results of the combustion. And if there is more air in the exhaust, the oxygen sensor will run lean or in other words, will produce less voltage on the signal wire. If the exhaust gas is rich in fuel, the oxygen sensor will produce more voltage. As I said, the most important oxygen sensor is before the catalytic converter. So on this car, you have to lift both front wheels and remove both plastic covers. Then you will see the oxygen sensor over here on the exhaust pipe. This is called narrow band oxygen sensor because it's able to read only rich or lean condition is the type of sensor used on many older vehicles. There are also wideband oxygen sensors. These are used more on newer vehicles since there are stricter regulations about emissions. I'll talk about them when I will find one on another car. Until then, we have a narrow band oxygen sensor. First, let's see how to test this sensor. You can do all these tests I'm gonna do without removing the sensors from the exhaust pipe. So in order to do some tests with the voltmeter, here is the connector of the oxygen sensor. You will need something to pry out these tabs. There is one tab here and one here. Ah, there we go. On the connector from the sensor, notice there are four wires. These two white wires are for the heater. There is a small heater inside the oxygen sensor which is bringing the sensor much faster to the operating temperature and the computer will control the emissions much sooner compared to the situation when you have to wait for the sensor to warm up from the exhaust gases. So here we go, we've got the wires for the heater, these two white wires and logically between these two you should have continuity. This test can be done especially if you get a code about a bad heating circuit. Set your voltmeter to ohms. Place your probes on the white wires. Gotta be these two pins up here. So let's see if we got continuity and here we go. There is some resistance like 9 ohms. That's great. But this doesn't mean that you will get 12 volts a disconnector. But that we're gonna check in a minute so Next, on the other two pins, we've got the ground and the signal wire. So I'm going to probe those. I will set the voltmeter to 2000 millivolts direct current. Now notice that on this sensor you don't have an input 5 volts wire as most of other sensors. This sensor will produce its own voltage, but in the same time it has to be on the operating temperature of around 300 degrees Celsius. There are basically two ways to do that. One is to start the car and let the exhaust warm up the pipe and the oxygen sensor. But that is quite noisy, so I'm going to use a propane torch. It will not produce the same amount of voltage, but still it will work. Right, so as you can see, the oxygen sensor begins to produce some voltage. Very low voltage, but still is rising once I'm uh, warming up the sensor. It begins to detect some fuel particles into the exhaust 0.019 now the flame is over 
and the voltage should drop. Also make sure that when you probe the connector you don't touch the terminals, otherwise theoretically you will short the oxygen sensor and you might break it down. Also another old test I know you can do is to knock on the sensor and you should not see any drop in voltage. I mean the drop should not be proportional with the heating. Now the voltage is dropping because of the temperature getting lower, not because I heat on the sensor. So that's a good sign. And the last test you can do on the oxygen sensor is a continuity between the terminals which are supposed to deliver voltage. And obviously there shouldn't be any continuity between those two. And that's it on the oxygen sensor side. These three tests can confirm that you don't need a new oxygen sensor and you don't even have to remove it from the exhaust pipe in order to test it. These wirings are going to the PCM. The only tests I can do here is to check if the wires are shorted to the ground or between each other. And let's see, there shouldn't be continuity between these pins. I'm gonna use this alligator clip to catch on one pin first. Now I can have the free hands required to connect on the pins. Let's see. So now I confirm that there is no wiring issue between these four wires because there are four wires down here. That doesn't mean that one of these wires are not short circuited with another wires from another sensor. So this is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna test for that. To do that, I'm going to back probe the first wire. I'm gonna use a second voltmeter. I'm going to set the voltmeter on continuity. Here we go, there is continuity, it means that the back probe is alright. I'm gonna take this voltmeter and set it in amps mode. So now basically this terminal is connected directly to one of the pins of the oxygen sensor. So let's open this fuse box where is also the PCM located. And down here, if you notice, there are basically four groups of wires. The first one are more thick, the second group are more thin and they go into the engine bay. So this group is for all the sensors on the car. So I'm gonna pop it off by pressing on this tab and pulling on this little lever like so and the connector comes out here you've got all the wires from all the sensors on the car this third group of wires are for the electronics which are fused or with relays remember all the sensors on the car they don't have fuses or relays because the current is not that strong so on this wire harness i'm going to probe each one of these pins watching the voltmeter and trying to catch the moment when I'm going to find the right pin. Here we go. But this doesn't guarantee the whole wire being fully covered and not shorted somewhere. So you have to look for further pins in order to check if the wire is touching on other one. And it might be any other wire. That is very less likely, but it can happen, especially on older Mercedes, the wires get brittle and they touch on each other, creating all sorts of electrical issues. Now I'm going to go down there and switch one of the pins and I'm going to do one more pin to show you where it's located. All right, so let's see. Yeah, here we go. So you can notice that you can find these pins in different locations. It's not necessary that they are grouped together. Now let's say for example, one of the pins is short circuited. Then you can open this wiring harness, take out the connector. There is a little clip in here, which you can just press it outwards. And then you can see the connector comes out. If let's say for example, this wire is short circuited and you confirm that, you can just, let's say, you can cut it from here and then cut it from down there as well. Then you weld a new wire on the end of the wire you cut. And after you finish with the welding and make sure that it's smooth, 
you pull the wire from the other side and when you pull you also pull in the new wire and therefore you are able to connect it on both connectors at the PCM and on the sensor. If you have a scan tool with live data it's much easier to check and do all the tests I've done until now by just looking at this graph. Another thing to mention is that on some cars this continuous change from rich to lean every second it's helping the catalytic converter to burn more efficiently the toxic gases like nitrogen oxide or leftover hydrocarbons. This will also depend on what type of catalytic converter is on that car. The best way to use this fluctuation graph is to compare it against the fuel trims. I will make another video about that because it's a long topic. And lastly, you can watch how the oxygen sensor begin to read reach when I apply propane on the intake. Also using propane can be very useful in detecting vacuum leaks if you spray it around the area where you suspect that you might have a vacuum leak. So as you can see, there are a bunch of tests you can do and use the oxygen sensor in your favor and make it easier to detect any issues you will have with your engine. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.